it's seven day. So let's get started. Oh, so for the okay, um, the final. Oh, so I should turn that off. Um, one second. Sorry, let me check. So the final, um, well, first of all, let, um, tell me why you are here. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, your section number and your name to get an extra credit up to five points. And um, okay, I didn't write it here. But um, there will be 55 questions on the final, as you know. And I think we will have about 60 minutes or 65 minutes maybe 60 to 60 to 65 minutes you the half of the finals um will be covered will cover the the chapter 19 20 and chapter 8 i think anyway after the exam three one what are those chapters so it will be chapter 1920, which we learned the last week, chapter 8, which we will learn tomorrow, and chapter 18 and 14, and that's the last chapter that we are going to cover before the final. So um, 19 and 20, also 13 and 14, they are combined in one week, which means there will be a lot of little information, but it's not. I, I guess it's it, it won't be super complicated. It will just be more of memorization. But those chapters are going to be um, the half of your final. So make sure to study them. Also, Dr. Wengren said that um, next week, no, not next week, so tomorrow, we will do chapter eight, the metabolism chapter, right? And that's the chapter that kind of reviews the carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. So um, it will be a good review for you for the, the, the final. So make sure that you listen to that chapter um, tomorrow. And um, I think that will help you to know where to start. She is also going to give you a um, study list, I guess. It's not going to be a study guide, but she's going to tell you stuff like nutrient dense. Like you need to know what nutrient dense is and, and then it will be listed under chapter one. So in that way, uh, as you go through the terms in the study list, I guess, um, if you don't know what it is, then that kind of helps you to go back to the PowerPoint slide or your your um, the smart book, then go to that chapter to know what that term is. So hopefully that will be helpful. And then lastly, um, as she said last week, it will be good to study the previous exam questions. Um, I can't guarantee there will be the exactly same questions, but um, the questions are coming from the bank. So you might see if you if you got a few questions wrong and you don't know the answer of that, there is a chance that you will see similar or the same question so make sure uh, you know why you got it wrong so that it will be so sad you, you get two same questions and you got both of them wrong so anyway so that's my advice for now um hi Bailey uh, so here to review the test and just cover what you read in the book so what do you mean by just Go over what you read in the book. We um, hopefully you're talking about chapter, what is it? Chapter 19 and 20, right? Because that's what we are doing. We'll do chapter eight tomorrow. But um, yeah, if you have any questions from the book that I don't cover in the, um, I'm gonna change it to the entire screen that I don't cover in this. Um, the office hour, or maybe she, Dr. Ring Ring didn't cover in hers, then let me know. Okay, now you can all see the screen. 
I like this chapter actually. 19 and 22. Hey, Taylor. Um, because it's practical. It's something we can do every day. So let's go over this. There are some, let me put my note really quick, one second. Okay, I'm back. So hopefully I can help you organize stuff in here. So food for illness. Uh, it's it's big. It's it's big, but we don't um, many people don't think as serious as they should, and many people don't know about it because you you can't see the bacteria, you can't see viruses. So, but it's it's big thing. So if you have six people in your family, um, one person in your family will get this foodborne illness yearly. So it's fairly common, like cold. The so these are the departments they regulate the food supplies if it's um, safe for us to consume and stuff like that, right? And FDA and USDA they are probably you heard those the most. So they are the most well two biggest that helps but um, just this two are the most I guess the biggest organizations in the United States that um, do it. what's going on oh okay good Sorry, some reason I thought the connection was bad, but I think we got that, right? Okay. Um, so, there are two types of foodborne illness. First one is infection, and the second one is by, so Ill, Ill, the infections by pathogens. The second one is going to be like the toxins, but so we will kind of like go through and help you distinguish the differences between two. It's kind of confusing. Uh, I don't think you need to know so much in detail, but you probably need to know they are different. So pathogens, it's something, so they can be bacteria, viruses, and parasites. So it's anything that makes you sick like any organisms that makes you sick. And the in toxic, in other words, it's, um, it's, it can be organism, I guess, because bacteria is in there. Anyway, but toxic is something that happens in, like happens naturally, like mushrooms, some mushrooms are toxic, right? So um, it's a little bit different in that way, but just for now, pathogens. Those are something that makes you sick. Uh, typical symptoms because it's like an infection, so it makes your body respond like you have an infection. You have fever, fever, and also other things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, and headaches, like the ones that you get when you have foodborne illness. So. Just don't trust this graph as Dr. Wengren said in the class. Just know that norovirus and salmonella are the most common cause of Ill foodborne illness, but people don't usually die from it. However, listeria is one that's uh, not most common for the foodborne illness, but when you get it, it can actually cause you to die. Um, especially if you're pregnant and have this, um, it can cross the placenta and it can be um, fatal to the baby. So um, if you're pregnant, you, you want to make sure that you want to avoid the food that has listeria, which is like soft cheese and deli meat.
Uh, it's just saying that not every time we have pathogens in our body, we get sick, right? Because sometimes they die, like we have layers of defense system, right? So we have like our skin is our defense system. So our skin is like first to protection or like when we eat our mouth, has all the enzymes that kill. Uh, we also have um, acid, chlor chloric acid, hydrochloric acid in our stomach that kills pathogen. But if we consume so much that these weren't enough, and then it makes through the stomach and going to your um, GI tract, I guess, then that's when you get sick. So. We probably are exposed to more, but we don't always get sick. But like she mentioned in the class, um, if you if your immune system is low, like you're pregnant, or if you have children, or you're old, um, they they because of their weak system more susceptible susceptible to get sick. And then this practice that we are going to learn. Um, to keep us safe is more important for them. Okay, norovirus. It's it's something that um, can be transmitted from fecal to oral, as she mentioned, and probably that's why in the restaurant everywhere said that make sure you wash your hand um, before exit the restroom or something. The sign you always see, right? Probably. Um, the sign is for this virus, norovirus. You want to know what it is. Um, and you probably know this already. Just know what's highlighted in red for sure. Or make notes somewhere or something so you don't, because you don't have much time to go through all the slides during the exam. So make note of it or something so you have it handy. Salmonella, um, it's famous for the uncooked eggs or spoiled eggs, right? And um, it appears fairly quickly. That's how she characterized it. Something about salmonella, because it's 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 um, associated with eggs. You know, like um, the the salad dressings or dips made with mayo, like ranch or like a tartar sauce. Anything, if they are out of the fridge for more than four hours, that's basically re increasing the risk of um, introducing this pathogen, salmonella. So if you have any dressing or sauce or dips that have, that are like mayo-based, make sure that you refrigerate them really well. And if it's past the expiration date, um, just throw it away. Don't keep it because it's not worth it. I decided to include it here because it can be deadly and contaminated. Um, it's it um, many the I guess the most common place that you can find this is in your hamburger. So if you go to hamburger place and and see if it's not, I'm not sure why the screen keep turning back to the flag and and come back here. Anyway. I'm at school, so I don't think my internet is weird, but hopefully it will be fine. Um, but so make sure if when you go to hamburger place and, and if your meat is pink, don't eat it. Make sure you go back to the cashier or, or whoever and then get a new one and let them know that it's not cooked well. Anyway, so the reason why it's deadly is because it so it, it can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome. So what it is, is that it kind of alters your red blood cell. And then um, that stresses your kidney, and then it makes your kidney fail. And when your kidney fails, your life is, your life is in danger. It's not a very good thing. So that's why, so we need to be careful of this. Okay. Did it make sense so far? Hopefully. Let's go to Listeria. So it's the most common cause of death. Um, 
Uh, like I said, you can find it in soft cheese or the deli meat. So make sure if you're pregnant, don't eat them. Your, your doctor probably told you that, but that is the reason behind it. Okay, so we talked about foodborne um, infection, illness that's like infection. The next one is intoxications, um, basically toxins. So um, the two most important one, I guess, or the most common ones that she, Dr. Wengri wants to know is Staphylococcus aureus. Don't tell me to pronounce that again. <laughs> anyway, so this and Clostridium botulin botulinum, um, those two are bacteria. So um, toxins, well, You, I don't know. Like I, I don't, I don't know if there's like a, a simple, clear definition to like distinguish between the toxins and infection. But toxins is like they are bacteria, but the viruses and the parasites um, that were included in infection, though they they will not be included in toxin. You will only see the bacteria here. So I don't know if that will help you to kind of distinguish in the test uh, when you do the final, but as you, I don't, anyway, just memorize it. And toxins, just there are two bacteria that you need to know. So this first one, um, you get sick um, in one to six hours. And you actually, this bacteria is on our skin. You will see it on skin. But when we get when we get cut like that, that's how it gets introduced in our body. Also, this is not just on our skin, right? It can be on animal skin, like cow, pig, kid, chicken. Um, so when so so when we don't our we, when we don't cook our meat in uh, to the the proper temperature, then they don't die, and then we eat them, and then we get this deadly virus or bacteria, and it's not fun. They will make you um, have diarrhea, vomiting, all that, and sometimes they're antibiotic resistant because they can be like super bacteria, I guess. So um, it's really hard to get rid of them, and you can, your, your family can get it from you and stuff like that, so it's not fun. Okay, next one. Um, this is, um, I guess, they live in an anaerobic conditions without air. So the canning or honey, they don't have air inside of the container, right? Like, so that's where they grow, and that's why Dr. Ringer mentioned that if you're canning at home, that's when you want to be careful the most because. Uh, it might, the practice might not be as uh, strict as other places or, or, or something. So, and they, it makes you paralyze your muscle and you can die. So it's very dangerous. And because it's toxic, it's not infection, the symptoms don't include fever, fever, but it's more like you just get sick. Um, hopefully it made sense so far. I am not getting any additional questions, so I'm assuming it did. Okay, I'm going to make this a little smaller. Fat pump, that's how you can memorize it. You need to memorize this. So, um, in this six conditions, the bacteria grows the, the fastest. Okay, so food, cross-contamination. Do you remember what this means? Cross-contamination like um, raw seafood and the salad. And then the as you were moving your food, fish to cook, you, um, I don't know, 
um, you went over the salad and the juice from the fish got dropped onto that salad and, and now it's cross-contaminated. So that's what it means. So that's why we need to separate um, our, our food when we cook meat and fruits and vegetables and use different knives and stuff like that to make sure that the food, food um, different foods don't get cross-contaminated. Cross Acid, um, lower than pH 4.6 is safer. Higher pH is um, more favorable for bacteria to grow. Time, if you had your food out of the fridge or the out of this danger zone. So if your food was stay was staying at this danger zone for more than two hours, then it's not safe anymore because the bacteria is growing in there, even though we can't see. The danger zone 40 to 140 Fahrenheit, that's when the bacteria tend to grow the fastest. So even so so for example you you freeze something or maybe you cook something that doesn't mean that doesn't guarantee you killed all all bacteria or you stopped their growth 100 percent there there still will be some bacteria um, that can survive in that temperature zone however they will not multiply as fast as they can in this danger danger zone so that's why we want to um, put our food be out of this zone. Uh, oxygen, some bacteria can live without oxygen, but most of them cannot live without oxygen, just like we can't. So airtight containers um, will be safer. Also, cold and dry area is, is safer. More water, more bacteria, right? Okay, uh, you can read this through. Shellfish, it's kind of, um, I think the reason it's here is because like, if you don't clean it well, like shrimp and stuff under the, under the, what do you call that? The layer, um, there can be bacteria trapped and then if you don't clean well, or if you don't cook well, then, then the bacteria will not die and it can be dangerous, so. Okay, four C's. You need to probably know this too. She didn't highlight it, so I don't know if you need to memorize it, but that's like the basics of basic that people learn every time we, we talk about this, so how I am assuming that this will be on the test. So clean, separate, chill, and cook. If you have a question, if you don't understand what those are, let me know. Okay. Mm. You need to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Otherwise, your bacteria will stay there. You know how, like, if you're scrubbing um, your pen or something, if you're only scrubbing for, like, two seconds, like, the sticky ones will not get killed cleaned, right? But if you're doing it for like 20 seconds, then even the toughest one will, will get taken out. So that's why. 20 seconds. That's important. Okay. Let's see. Change your sponge. Uh, separate. You can just read it here. The danger zone, we talked about it, um, when you, so if you like medium or medium rare, maybe medium is a better choice than medium rare, because medium rare is in danger zone, so it never killed any bacteria. Well, it, it did, but it has lesser, it has more risk, and there will be more bacteria left over than when it's cooked higher than the danger zone, so. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you need to know 
I don't think you need to memorize all this number. Uh, I don't think that will test you on that. But if you were, if you have food handlers permit to like work at the restaurant or be a dishwasher or something, then that's something they ask you, right? Um, after four days, just fill it up. Mm. And raw meat and poultry shouldn't be in the refrigerator for more than two days. So like usually when I buy them, they have like best to use by date or like um, sell by date or something, right? I usually try to don't go over the sell by date or best to use by date. Um, when you thaw something, like when you thaw meat, it's best to do it under cold running water or using a micro, like use the microwave. Um, let's see, you can just read it though, they're not super complicated, right? So, Kenny, you know that we remove um, oxygen from it. We heat first to kill everything in there, and then we remove the oxygen from it, and then that ugh, it went blank again. Am I gonna come back? Is it gonna come back? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm back. Good. Okay. Uh, so. You heat and then kill all the bacteria and viruses and all that can be there. And then we remove the oxygen and then it can be preserved for longer period. Pasteurization, high heat. Irrigation, we destroy the part of a DNA of the pathogens so they are basically dead. So that's what irrigation is. We use that in a lot of fruits and vegetables and then um, it increases the shelf life of the food. We actually didn't do this, huh? So GRAS is generally recognized as safe, and this is like a label that, that food ad addictives, well, anyway, it's the label from the government. And I didn't know this, but trans fats, I, I knew that trans fats are bad, but I didn't know if they were recognized as generally rec like generally safe food. And then later they realized no, it's not. I never really need to. Uh, we can read this. Oh yeah, we, we did tell here, we watched that that video, huh? So yeah, it is tricky, right? Like people don't want um, genetic, gen, genetically modified food. Like they don't, they say that we don't know the, the side effects of it and stuff like that. But then at the same time, that's the one, um, that's that's the technology that helps us grow more producing stuff for more people we have. So uh, it comes back and goes away so when it goes away and then that can you guys hear me hopefully you were able to like continue to hear me even though you didn't have the slide for a few seconds if you did it and then you missed something let me know gmo that's the genetically modified food right and ipm is like the practice um to have a sustainable food system and many of organic farmers do that. Um, oh, yeah, yes, yes, good, thank you. Okay, good to know, so you can hear me well. We didn't do this, so I probably won't go over that. Um, if she, I, I am assuming that she will talk about this a little bit more. If she doesn't, it's probably not that important. 
but if you so this so this one was kind of interesting so organic food they are kind of, they're usually more expensive right but the researchers say that sometimes it's not there's no difference really between the organic food and not like the nutrient content in it it's the same however um some food like potato tomato or maybe strawberries that like the skins are really thin then then if it's not organic maybe there's more chemical in it and when it's organic it's lesser like there's less chemical and stuff like that so maybe it's worth to spend more money on this dozen food plus snap beans and watermelon but if it's like mango cabbage avocado pineapple like generally if they have a thicker like peel i guess then thicker skin then and then you remove them before you eat you probably don't need to spend more money to do it okay okay i think that's all for today hopefully it was helpful make sure that you come to the lecture tomorrow um so you will be um, reviewed and prepared for the exam and let me know and email me if you have any questions. Okay, good luck. Bye.